not celebrating the redemption of others is an obvious sign you don't understand your own redemption from sin. If you think that it takes more of Jesus's death, more of Jesus's blood to redeem her than it did to redeem you, you don't understand redemption. Podcaster Michael Knowles recently sat down with a former OnlyFans girl who was doing very sexually explicit content. However, she has had a massive conversion to Christ. She put her faith in Jesus. She is trying now to live out her Christian life. And they sat down for a long extended interview where she talked painstakingly about what, what everyone experiences before their conversion, which is that there is this thing missing inside of you. And the more you try to fill it with things of this world, the emptier and emptier you feel and the emptier you actually become until finally you are willing to repent, to change your mind, to turn and find that God is there and he's pursuing you and he loves you and he has a life for you. And she's wanting to to redeem the pain of her past, to redeem all the bad that she has done. She's heartbroken over all of the people that she has caused to stumble through her explicit, you know, posts and videos and everything that she was doing, the conversations she had. She is weighed down by the guilt of a lot of money that she made, and she, she wants to redeem her story. She's getting married to a Christian man or maybe already married to a Christian man, and she's been baptized into her church. She's really trying to do it, and she's very open and very, very raw and very heartbroken by all this. And as a result of that conversation, many people found it inspiring and many people heard the gospel in a new way that hopefully spoke to her. She talks about wanting to redeem her story by rescuing other girls who have fallen for this trap that you can make thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars by just, you know, selling your body and selling your soul. She wants to go and like rescue them and spend her time and energy on that. At the same time, there's a huge portion of Christians who responded to this with some of the most negative, vile that you can possibly imagine. And of course, social media in general, and especially Twitter is a very negative space, but you have to imagine being this young woman, God rescuing you out of this, trying to stand up and spread your faith. And these are the kind of things that you are met with. We'll look at a few of these. This is in response to Michael Knowles sitting down with her. Uh, Itchy Dan, uh, sounds like an uh, interesting guy. If she was actually serious about her conversion, she wouldn't be doing it publicly like this. Her only fans grift has ended and now she's moved on to milking Christians. Uh, Pearl Davis, she said, you know what's funny? I rarely drink, I don't smoke, I don't party, and yet trad con women tell me I'm not a real Christian while simultaneously defending an ex only fans, W-H-O-R-E. Uh, someone said, what's the funny part? Christianity is about forgiveness. And she said, the funny part is she raised her OnlyFans prices, didn't delete the account, and now is hailed by Christians as saved. Let her put in a little work. A lot of people pointed out that that's not true, that she has shut down her OnlyFans account. Let her put in a little work, Pearl Davis says. Laura Loomer, who is uh, big on the political scene, she says, these OnlyFan girls can pray their slutty behavior away all they want. They will never be respectable, no matter how much they cry to God. Praying to be a respectable person doesn't work once you do sex work. It's best that we shun women like this from society forever. Um, I hope that Laura Loomer has zero sexual discre discretions in her past. I hope that she is as pure as the driven snow. And I can promise you she's not because none of us are. All of us, I mean, at minimum, here's what Jesus said while he was on earth. And Laura Loomer is, is Jewish, so she doesn't necessarily believe in, in Jesus. And, but I, I would get to Jewish examples of this as well. Here's, here's, here's what Jesus said. If you look at someone with lust, you have already committed adultery. What does she say? Uh, sh she says, once you, once you are sexually immoral, you'll never be respectable again. And there's not these distinctions. There isn't this distinctions between like you, your your sexual discretion is is worse than mine. It's like sin is sin. And on a Christian worldview, it is our sin that separates us from God. All of us in the degree of sin, it has consequence on earth. This young lady will live with the natural consequences of there being you know, awful content about her on the internet forever because the internet is forever. She'll have to live dealing with the guilt from this and hopefully getting help and going to therapy and all those things. Yes, consequence like here experienced here and now it can vary dramatically but if you're not in christ it's just sin period that separates you from him you, you are positionally separated from god and that is only changed through your acceptance of christ so 
Let's just go through some of the things that are being uh, proposed online in people's response. Number one, can a former sex worker be redeemed? I want us to look at Hebrews chapter 11. This is often called the hall of faith, kind of like the hall of fame. This is like the big dogs who are representatives of us, the the patriarchs, the people who modeled this out for us. Uh, Let's go quickly through some of these names. It starts by saying faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. By this, our ancestors were approved. Hebrews is being written to a Jewish audience. By faith, we understand the universe was created by the word of God. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, Enoch was taken away. Um, By faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen, built an ark. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out for a place. By faith, even Sarah, when she was unable to have children, received power to conceive offspring. These all died in faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, he offered up his son. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob blessed each of those sons. By faith, Joseph mentioned the exodus of the Israelites. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents and then grew up and refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Look at all these names, man. Abraham and Isaac and Moses and Enoch and I mean all the it's like the big dogs right by faith verse 30 the walls of Jericho fell down after being marched around by the Israelites for seven days verse 31 by faith Rahab the prostitute welcomed the spies in peace and didn't perish with those who disobeyed can a former sex worker be redeemed yes I mean we can unequivocally say yes to this. Rahab is in the hall of faith. Rahab is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Rahab, who was a prostitute, but was converted. And now as an example, drawing millions of people and through her lineage, the savior of the world coming. Uh, What about what Pearl Davis says? It's time for her to put in some work. Uh, Do you have to work for your faith? We don't have to guess about this. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, you are saved by grace, through faith, and this is not from yourself, it is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. Well, let me remind you, what is Pearl Davis doing if not boasting? She she says, you know what's funny? I rarely drink. I don't smoke. I don't party. Bragging, bragging, works, right? I do all these great works. And then this OnlyFans W-H-O-R-E comes in and everyone's like, oh, she's such a great Christian. She's just comparing herself to her. She's she's frustrated that she's not getting the platform to express her Christianity that somebody else is. It's envy. It's not of God. Let, let's ask this question. How does God react when sinners repent? You know, is it logically possible that this former OnlyFans girl is is just grifting all of us? Is it logically possible? Yeah, it's definitely possible. People are crazy and people do crazy things. However, she at least seems sincere. She is proclaiming the gospel. She is expressing her repentance. So how does God react when people come back to him? Well, we don't have to guess about this. We see it in scripture. Jesus told them this parable. What man among you who has a hundred sheep and loses one of them does not leave the 99 in the open field and go after the one lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, what does he do? He joyfully puts it on his shoulders and coming home, he calls his friends and neighbors together saying with them, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. Now, Jesus tells us what this parable means. I tell you in the same way. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need repentance. Maybe you're right, Pearl Davis. Maybe you're right, Laura Loomer. Maybe you're right, Itchy Dan. Wow. Maybe you're righteous. Maybe you are as pure as the driven snow. Maybe it's just like, you know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and Itchy Dan just like right below him, okay? Maybe. Probably not. Maybe God rejoices more over an OnlyFans girl coming home than over your supposed righteousness. That's just what Jesus said. So let's talk practically about taking someone who is very new in their faith and the platforms that we put them on. So hopefully I've made it clear. Like we should rejoice over this and we should not play the comparison game. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, what you need to do is stop looking at the speck in someone else's eye and notice there might be a log in your own. Clean up your own house, take care of yourself, worry about your own personal relationship with God and rejoice over those who are doing the same. 
who are trying to clean up their own act, who are trying to make changes, who are trying to be a positive influence for the gospel. We see things like Saul, who is persecuting the Christians, who desires to stomp out this movement, who wants the Christians dead. And then he has a conversion experience and he becomes Paul and he becomes one of the preeminent church planners of all time. So we see people early, they have a zeal for the gospel and they should be sharing that. I do have a question about the platforms they shared on. I have no problem with this interview. I, my heart breaks for how many Christians are responding to it. Um, I do also think there is wisdom in allowing a season of maturity. And we must be careful not to allow our platforms to be heavier than the load that we are capable of bearing. In 1 Timothy 3, Paul is giving Timothy three. Timothy instructions on how to put elders in place in the church. And here's part of the instruction. He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. And the devil, of course, was kicked out of heaven for growing prideful and thinking that he didn't need God anymore. And so I do think we should be careful. And look, this young woman is not trying to be the the senior elder of a church somewhere. Um, she's just trying to share the gospel. And so I know that that's not like an exact correlation, but I do think there is a principle there. And I see this principle all over scripture. You see it in Hebrews where there's constantly called to go on to maturity. Paul to the church in Ephesus says, we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and the cunning and craftiness of people and their defeat, deceitful scheming. And so there is something to having a season of maturity. Even Paul went and sat under apostles and learned to, to have some time to grow in our belief and grow in our conviction. Does that mean that we stop spreading the gospel? Absolutely not. And one of the things I think is a huge mistake inside the church and inside Christianity is people coming to the Lord and having a zeal for their salvation and just saying, you know what, once you learn the ins and outs of exegeting scripture, then you can go share your faith. I think that's a mistake because what people need is what she's sharing right now. She is not on Michael Knowles podcast trying to exegete scripture. She's not trying to debate atheists. She is not getting into scholarly theological debate. She's sharing her story. And that's exactly, exactly what we should do when we come to Christ because we may not know the full historical cultural context of the book of Galatians, but we do know what Jesus did in our life and where he found us and how he's beginning to redeem our story. We should be sharing that and we should just be applauding people who are sharing that in their own faith. Here's what, here's what kind of the bottom line is for me. Not celebrating the redemption of others is an obvious sign you don't understand your own redemption from sin. If you think that it takes more of Jesus's death, more of Jesus's blood to redeem her than it did to redeem you, you don't understand redemption. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And listen, maybe you didn't have the outlet. Maybe your worst ways didn't expose themselves in the same way as some of these women who are turning to OnlyFans, trying desperately to fill a God-sized hole in their life. Maybe your path looked differently than you, but you need to know Jesus came and he said, look, you may not be a murderer, but anytime you've hated your brother in your heart, you are guilty of murder before God. He raised the level only to say all of us are hopeless without Jesus. And if we cannot just like almost fall on our knees overjoyed by someone coming home to the father, we don't understand our own redemption. If you think you're better than someone, you don't understand your own redemption. If you think that someone doesn't deserve the blood of Christ, you don't understand your own redemption. And I would really, really heartfeltly encourage you to spend some time understanding who God is and understanding how desperately you yourself need God. And I think that will build some grace into your experience of life to where you can celebrate like all of heaven celebrates when a lost sheep comes home. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed so you can stay up to date with all new content. And if you want early access, exclusive content and monthly live Q and A's, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Clayton Tyson.